Hey guys, I'm gonna do the book recommendation tag created by Steph Bower. I'm not sure if that's how you say her last name, but I'm just guessing. I'm being blinded by this light right now. Gizmo is our guest star. <laughs> anyway, so let's start with the first question. A book you tell people is your favorite. <sighs> this one is so hard for me. So a book I usually say is my favorite is The Madman's Daughter. Because, honestly, just that whole series. The Madman's Daughter series. Because, honestly, not a single book that I've ever read has ever been even close to that book. As far as the setting, the the things that happen in it, even the main, the main character. I just love that book with a passion. I love everything about that book with a passion. But I would also say Delirium, that whole series, is by far my favorite dystopian series that I've ever read. I think because the main character has been the one I've connected with the most in any book that I've ever re read before. recommendation also dystopian is my favorite genre of book just in general and I think the reason why is because I love both literary fiction just fiction in general you know just stories in general but I also love fantasy so I feel like dystopian kind of teeters on that line of both fantasy plus also fiction and you know with a lot of fantasy books the world building can be really hard to get into and you know they often <laughs> make up words and I find with dystopian it's just a lot easier to grasp the fantasy aspect I guess if that makes any sense I don't know if it does you see Gizmo? He's laying on me. Not me falling asleep. A book that is your guilty pleasure. So, I would have to say my guilty pleasure book is Not a Happy Family. Because it reminds me of my family. <laughs> I did not just say that. No, but really, my guilty pleasure, I'd have to say Every Last Secret. I'm pretty sure it's on the Kindle Unlimited. <laughs> and I didn't even read the description. I just saw the cover. I was like, interesting. Opened it and tell me why I didn't guess a single plot twist in this book. <laughs> I thought I knew what was happening. Even, even towards the ending, oh, I know what's gonna happen. I already know. I already know what's happening. I know who the character is. I know what they're doing. Like, I get it. Nah. Nah. No. No, that book got me. It had me on my toes. Like, this is me on my toes. It had me on my toes the whole, the whole ride. And then also, birthday girl, because who doesn't love a little bit of spice? Little bit of spice. Also, I just love the main character. I just love how the main character had a lot of, I guess, dimension to her. A book everyone loved, but you didn't. So, I don't know if everyone loves this book, but I know everyone loves this author, Colleen Hoover. Now, let me tell you something before I say it. I love Colleen Hoover too, okay? So... I was so surprised that I did not like this book by her. Okay, this is the only book that I've read that I didn't like by her. But Regretting You by Colleen Hoover. Just because it was Colleen Hoover, I gave it two stars. If it wasn't Colleen Hoover, one star, if that. Okay? Mm, I will say though, 
I think it had a lot to do with, well, no, okay, I tried reading it, couldn't get into it, I was about a DNF, and a lot of times when that happens to me, I just listen to the audiobook to see if I can get into it. Tell me why this audiobook, the girl narrating or whatever, the girl who was reading it, talk like this the whole time, and she also, like, emphasize the nasaliness. <laughs> it was so painful. Oh my gosh, I only finished this book because it was Colleen Hoover. It was Coho. But oh my gosh, this book. No. Moving on, moving on. A book you read the fastest. Now see here's Colin Hoover again. Layla and Verity. Okay, I couldn't choose between either one. First of all, Layla... Oh, I never read a scary book before. I didn't even know it was scary, okay? I didn't even know it was scary. It's scary, okay? It is scary. <laughs> I never read a scary book before. And after I read that one, like, I'm hooked. Maybe I should start... Maybe I should start reading scary books. Like, Colleen Hoover, you really did that. You made a girl who doesn't like scary anything like scary books. That's... That's interesting. Verity, is it scary? Mm, I'd say more creepy. But I love this side of Colleen Hoover's writing. Colleen Hoover, I love this side of you. <laughs> a book that deserves more hype. Either one of these recommendations, I could understand why people wouldn't like them, but at the same time, I could see a lot of people actually liking them. So first and foremost, The Bromance Book Club. It's exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> this group of guys who read romance books together. <laughs> For enjoyment and also for like to help them in their relationship which I think is just so funny and just the whole the characters in this book like just think of average dudes okay just think of an average dude mildly no I think all of them are athletic they're all like in baseball or some sort of something like that anyway average dude okay <laughs> They just love reading romance together. <laughs> it's just so funny. Is it cheesy? Yes, very cheesy. No other book has made me laugh as much as this book has. So, that one. And also, this other one, it's on a completely different side. But, Before I Fall. Now, this one is by the same author of Delirium. One of my all-time favorite book series and it's the writing is very different in this one I'd have to say the YA aspect of it is pretty obvious okay so this book I actually almost DNF'd but I switched to the audiobook and I'm so glad I did I'm so glad I did because every character in this book besides the main character has a accent of think F boy, you know, F boy with the snap back and chain. Okay, think that accent plus also valley girl, the valley girl accent. You, you know what I mean, you know what I'm saying. Okay, this audio book had me laughing so much. <laughs> I loved it so much. But then also, like, this book is not meant to be funny. It's centering around bullying, mainly. And this girl pretty much reliving her, her last day alive. And I was laughing at the characters in this book. But, like, the story itself is really good, too. I feel like a lot of people would enjoy it as long as you don't mind the YA aspect of it. It is pretty juvenile. A book that is becoming a movie slash TV show. So I couldn't think of 
one that wasn't already a movie or a TV show. Beautiful Boy, because I haven't watched the movie, but I have read the book. That book did a number on me. That's all I'm gonna say. A book you have reread the most. Now I also included this in my spring book recommendation video, but Green Angel. Now that one just has a special place in my heart. I hardly ever reread books and it's really short too. It's a really short book. It's really easy to get into. You can literally, it's one of those books you can literally just open to a random page and just start reading. Like it's a good book. Okay, a book from a genre you don't typically read. Got it right here. <laughs> so this one, if you know the story of this book, what a gem, right? What a gem. The story of this book. I, I'm not talking about like the, the story of this book. I'm talking about the story of getting this book. The story of reading this book is amazing. This genre is prehistorical fiction because it's in the set in the caveman times, but I was so pleasantly surprised by this. No, I've never read or enjoyed historical fiction before. I, I never thought I would say, hey, this book, one of my favorites. <laughs> I love this book. Well, what is it about? Mm, caveman times. Like, no, I never thought I would say that sentence. Never in my life. But give it a try, guys. Okay, don't be afraid to dip your toes <laughs> in new things, okay? <laughs> A book that deserves all the hype it gets. So I just finished reading this book yesterday. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. This book deserves all the hype it gets. Period. Okay. That's all I have to say. A book you usually recommend when asked to give a recommendation. What I want to give to everyone is It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover, but I also know that a lot of people don't like Colleen Hoover. So if you don't like Colleen Hoover, I would say Everything I Never Told You, because that one I think everyone can enjoy, you know, if you don't have an issue with that author or style of writing. I just love how this book, every chapter is like taking off another layer. It's like a whole enigma. This whole family is an enigma, okay? And it branches out from the mom, the dad, the two daughters, and the son. And you're just, you see like one aspect of the family. No, you see one perspective of the family and then you go to another one and it's something completely different and then you get like into their emotions and it's just it's so good okay a book that has your favorite characters this one was really hard for me to narrow narrow down but addicted to you i've only read the first book in the series but colin 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 cobalt colin. Colin. <laughs> Oh my gosh, he made me laugh so much. The Bromance Book Club. All the men in this book club, okay? All of them. So hilarious, okay? But especially the Russian. That's what they called him in the book. I don't think they ever mentioned a name for him. They just always called him by his nickname, the Russian. So I'm just going by that. The Russian. <laughs> and his irritable bowels, okay? If you've read the book, you know. <laughs> but also from the book Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow, Sam. Sam is literally a living, breathing anime character. <laughs> and I just loved how everybody who knew him, who was close to him in his life, or even just 
strangers to him that didn't really know him. They all had a, a such a funny way of describing him, and I just loved it. <laughs> okay, Sam is just Sam. Sam is just Sam, and I love Sam. A book you wish you could live in. This is a series, and I've never actually read the series, but I love the show. <sighs> Bridgerton. Bridgerton. Okay, these are the only two books I have physically. Honestly, I love the show so much that I know I'm gonna love the book. Who doesn't want to dress up in ball gowns and attend balls? Like, that's so fancy and luxurious. That's the only world I want to live in and stay in. Also, Green Angel, okay? Green Angel. I want to live in this book solely because I feel like me and the main character could be friends and we could live our cottage core dreams together. Just be cottage core best friends, honestly. Okay, period. A book you thought you would hate but ended up loving. I feel like a lot of times when we see these recommendations or we read reviews, it makes you think that a book is something else than what it is. Where the Crawdads Sing. There was a lot of reviews by people saying that this book is so boring. I had a negative thought process when I first went into this book. I was thinking, oh, it's going to be so boring and blah, blah, blah. So I tried reading the first chapter and I was like, you know what? This has a lot of like southern accents. And for me, accents are really hard to read. So I switched to the audiobook and I can see why people think it's boring. This book is very descriptive and yeah, old school, the old times in the South. If you listen to the story, it's so easy to have that picture of the world and what's happening right in front of you because it's so descriptive. So, yeah, I expected to hate that book, but I actually really loved it. I gave it five stars. Oh, but adding to that, I'm going to add this one because, I don't know, it just seems important adding this question. A book you thought you would love but ended up hating. <laughs> so, a little about me. I've been trying to get into classics, reading classics. And that's not easy for me, as I'm sure it's not easy for a lot of people too. So I looked up a lot of recommendation videos or just lists on Google and whatnot of easiest classic books to read. And the picture of Dorian Gray popped up. Um, this book made me feel so dumb. <laughs> I didn't know what the heck was going on, but I think it's also because I didn't care what was going on. I didn't care about the Dorian Gray. I didn't care about any of the characters. I didn't know what was going on. Old English talk is so hard for me to get into. I just, just thinking about it makes me snore. Okay, that's my review on that book. I didn't even finish it. I DNF'd it because I was like, why am I torturing myself? Why am I doing this? Just to say, I read a picture of Dorian Gray. No, like, no, I'm not doing that to myself. <laughs> but another one that I thought I would love, but ended up hating so much to my core is 28 Summers by Ellen Hildebrand. I read this book last summer and Ellen, Ellen Hildebrand, I think, is an iconic author. Her books are often hyped for the summertime, and I can see that, but at the same time, I never realized how much I hated this trope <laughs> until it was emphasized 10 times in this book. And I guess Ellen Hildebrand has this a lot in her books, and I don't think I can deal with that. But the cheating trope. Okay, the cheating trope. But in 28 Summers, think a lifelong cheating. This girl is literally on her deathbed 
and still having this weird relation okay i don't know i didn't like it <laughs> i just felt so sad for the girl okay she deserved more she deserved more she deserved someone to give them all her time to be there when she needed them always do you know what i mean like i just felt so sad for the girl i felt like the guy just kind of kept her in his back pocket for whenever he wanted to go on a vacation with his Sancha. Mm, that means side chick in Spanish, but <laughs> no, just no, I can't do it. A book that made you cry. I actually do kind of cry in a lot of books. <laughs> if it's emotional, I probably cried during it. Unless I don't care about the characters, then I don't give two, two Fs about it. <laughs> but the top one that came in my mind was A Child Called It. And this one is a true story about a man's childhood. And it's just so sad. It's really intense, okay? trigger warnings, tons and tons of trigger warnings for that book, but I think that was the first ever book I read that gave me such a visceral reaction. Like, I had to take breaks. I had to put that book down and go watch some cartoons for a few minutes because I couldn't with that book. But also the next one, Night by, I'm not sure how to pronounce the author's name, but Here's the book, Night. Okay, anything to do with the Holocaust sobbed uncontrollably. And I remember this book I had to read for a class. Would I ever be able to read it again? No, I couldn't. I couldn't. But on another note, another one that made me cry a lot was A Thousand Boy Kisses. And this one is a romance book. And it's YA, which YA books don't usually make me cry because they're so YA <laughs> but this one like stabbed me in my heart pulled out the knife stabbed it again and then twisted it around you know and I remember reading it and my sister saw me reading it one time and me just sobbing uncontrollably and then you know it gets a little happy next chapter goes by and then just twist the knife a bit more and then sobbing uncontrollably again and that's how that's pretty much my whole process reading that book but yes thousand boy kisses that one's another one that definitely deserves the hype that it gets because i've seen that one all over tiktok and it is really good the ending though what <laughs> I'm sorry, but the ending ruined it for me, okay? The ending ruined it for me. Why did it have to end like that? Like, all of a sudden, it was fantasy? Like, <laughs> no. Tell me what you guys thought of that ending. If you read that book, what did you think of that ending? I couldn't get behind that ending. I couldn't. A book you wish you could read for the first time. Now, this one's a bit controversial, but... The Love Hypothesis. Now that book is so special to me. I remember the first time reading it how happy I was and pleasantly surprised because I never read a romance book that was mixed with academia. I guess it wasn't necessarily the book I have issues with. It's the author, Allie Hazelwood. Yes, you, Allie. I'm talking to you. I tried reading most of her other books and I think she only has one other book and then a bunch of novellas but <laughs> I read the majority of them and reading her other books honestly has ruined the love hypothesis for me. <sighs> Does anyone else agree with me? Please I feel like I'm alone in this. Am I crazy? Am I crazy? And I, I've talked about this before in my 
my first video I made of the overhyped TikTok books of just Ali Hazelwood. It feels like you're copying and pasting the exact same things in every book. Is it just me? Is it just me? I wish I could go back and read that book for the first time again. Not read any of her other books. That concludes my book recommendation tag. My eyebrows are disappearing. Let me know what other videos you guys would like to see in this. This was, this was fun. I'm excited. I'm excited to see my recommendations change as I read more books. So see you guys in the next video. <laughs> bye! Gizmo, say bye. Gizmo. Gizmo. He's uninterested. Okay, bye guys. <laughs>